Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah. Thanks for watching. Okay, today I have some project updates for you. This is like a regular um, project updates video. Um, I will be sharing, yeah, my finished objects, work in progress, um, any acquisitions. I will do a little bit of a spoiler. So I have a new cast on. I have some, I need some help with a design I'm working on. And then I also have um, some like finished objects that are from a while ago. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna share those with you first. Um, some finished objects, I'll put some pictures up because I don't have them. Finished objects from the last couple of months that I haven't been able to share in here as like progress or um, finished objects, I guess. Um, I did two sample knits for Amy Sure uh, in the spring. So those are for the slightly sassy V-neck. I did both the um, purple sample and the green sample and they were lovely. The pattern is wonderful. It is a compound, compound raglan. So that means the fit is amazing. <laughs> um, just like trying it on myself and then sending it to Amy to try on. It just looks wonderful. Um, let me see, what can I say about this pattern? It's coming out soon. Um, I'm starting to see it all over Instagram. And so I think that, I don't know, I think that's exciting um, to see, yeah, these pictures, like everyone's sharing her pictures and like, wow, I, I knit that, I, I forgot. And so I've, I've been seeing a lot of new faces on my Instagram um, and a lot of people asking about, about sample knitting. Should I do a video about sample knitting? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't usually talk about it because I want to respect, you know, the people that I'm, I'm working with um, and kind of keep that professional out of like this kind of hobby part of, of knitting. But anyway, I use linen quill for the green sample and De Rurum Natura Antigone for the purple sample. Um, I never worked with that yarn. It was wonderful. It has some silk content. So that was nice to um, be able to work with and try on. And yeah, all good things. So I'll put some pictures up. And yeah, that's like, whenever I have big sample knits like those, those were both fingering weight. And they were tees, but they were still kind of a, a higher yardage. I slow down on my personal knits, which is fine. But then I'm like, why didn't I you know, complete all the knits I wanted to complete in the spring or in, you know, the, the end of winter. And I don't have anything to show for it, but it's because I have made those sweaters and that's what I was working on. And I just forget until they're posted and, and I remember, yes, that is what I was working on. I did make those um, this year. <laughs> so anyway, those are some finished objects. I also, I was talking about my Queen's cami in my last project updates video. I had finished it, but I wasn't content with the fit and it, it was a me issue again. Um, I somehow I made the straps like way too short. So I did go back and fix them. Um, it was super last minute. I went on a, a date with my husband. And so I was like, okay, this is it. I'm going to wear it. It was right before the launch day. And I was like, this is going to, it's going to be the pictures I use. I'm going to fix it. I fixed it. It took like maybe 10 minutes and I'm a lot happier with how it fits, how it lays. Um, I think I might go back and add more length because I do have more yarn. I did not know that it was going to be a cropped, but she has the schematic. So I could have looked and measured, you know, one of my tops and said, oh, okay, this is the perfect length. So I think I might go back and add more length and kind of put it in the, in the, towards the bottom and cut it out, add more length at the bottom. If you, I'll put a picture up, but it's just a little shorter than I would like. So anyway, I might have more to fix on that. I did not re-block it and I think I need to um, just to get the shoulders and the eye cord to like lay flat and, and look nice. But anyway, accountability, I did go back and fix that. Um, my sister is really helpful. She's always like, did you fix it? Are you wearing it? Have you fixed it? Cause she loves her Queen's cami that she has. And so yeah, I want to make another one. If I made it again, I would probably add some more length. Again, not a pattern issue, definitely a me issue. I should have like looked at the schematic and seen, you know, it's this length and, and whatnot. So anyway, I do really like it. The style is very cute. Um, so I'd love to make another if I had the time. 
and I want to modify mine to fix it. I should do that first. Okay. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, oh, I should tell you what I'm wearing. I am wearing the Irene Top by Sari Nordland. I'll stand up so you can see like a full view. This is what it looks like. I got my little khakis, khaki shorts on. So I'm full, like full beach grandma today, um, which is wonderful. I love this sort of like brown khaki gold. I'm very into that. This is like my one outfit. Um, my son is hanging out with his grandma this morning for a couple of hours. And so that's why I'm wearing this because I want him to like look cute, but I can't always wear my khaki shorts because there might be like, um, you know, chocolate or stuff like that coming at me. Um, so I'll probably change before, before I go pick him up this morning. But anyway, I wanted to wear it today and be, you know, this. So I, I don't wear this that much. As you can see, the underarm is like super low um, and it's really wide. So I don't really, I tested this pattern um, and during testing, there was a lot of feedback about these issues. Um, and so I don't think that, sorry, I, this was probably like three years ago. I was not like a super experienced knitter at the time, but I was not alone in the issues that I had with the pattern. And so um, I think she actually waited to release it for a while because yeah, there were just a lot of concerns about this, this issue. However, I love the yarn that I use. And so I don't think I'll ever rip this out and, and make the correct one. Honestly, I don't even, I went to go back and look at my patterns. Um, cause you know, you like get the pattern when you finish and, and all that. And I don't even have it because I think she removed it entirely and, and put a new one up. And so I have to buy it again. So I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, but I love the yarn. I use Pearl Soho Sweetgrass Fine and I held it triple. And so it's this beautiful cotton um, alpaca. It's so light. I could wear this all the time. That's part of the reason I'm like, uh, I love the yarn. It feels so good, but I'm just not crazy about the fit. Um, I honestly wear it more in the fall, like as a slipover, um, because I just feel more comfortable with the, the underarm issues um when I'm wearing it like as a as a slipover however my sister did try this on and it looks so good on her and the only reason I haven't just totally given it to her is because the yarn it feels so good it feels so good so I probably just need to like buy some more I got it super on sale it's not like it was you know a big investment I think I'm just like I don't have a lot of stuff that just feels this good on sometimes our projects they just don't quite turn out. I was talking to someone on Instagram about how I just have a hard time with my summer knits. And I think it's because if this was a long sleeve sweater and I had this weird underarm issue where it was a lot bigger than, you know, I would say it and maybe it should be. And I put the sleeves on it like for a winter sweater, I would be totally fine wearing it. I would be like oversized is in, I'm wearing this. And I would have no issues with that. And so I think it's just for a summer knit, it needs to be a little more precise because there's less like room for it to be like a not as good of a fit. So that's, that's like my, my thinking for why I struggle with my summer knits because I don't really mind if something doesn't fit that well, but the winter knits are much more forgiving. That is what I've come to realize. So my dissatisfaction with a less than perfect summer knit feels more pronounced than if it was a winter knit because a winter knit you can just wear it and it's fine. And there's like no, no big deal. But anyway, off my soapbox, those are just things I'm learning this, this season. Um, and on to my works in progress. So I have a new cast on that I've been talking about forever. It was in my what I'm making this summer video, spring summer video. Um, and I finally cast it on. I've had the pattern forever because I bought it right when, when it came out. Um, sorry, I dropped my yarn. This is Mondine by uh, Rosa Pomar. She um, makes yarn. She's in Portugal in Lisbon and um, yeah, she has a really cool story about, about her yarns. I won't spoil it because I don't really know all of it, but um, the, the shop is called Retrosaria. Her name is Rosa Pomar. This is Mondim. I believe it's marketed as a sock yarn, 
Um, I just like it because it's more affordable for a fingering weight sweater and I love how it feels. I have a sweater out of it. I also have socks out of it. Um, the socks are too big because I didn't know how to measure my feet like four years ago when I made them, three years ago when I made them. Um, but anyway, it's all a learning process. <laughs> but this is the Gowan cardigan and I'll put the, the name and the designer in the, oh, it looks so good, in the um, description box. So this is a seamed, a bottom up seamed cardigan. It's like full length, um, maybe even like a little bit longer and um it has this sweet three by one rib a lot of people ask me i put this on my instagram and a lot of people ask me like is it is it stockinette is it ribbed um i can't tell so it's definitely ribbed but when it's relaxed like before blocking you maybe can't tell as much that it that it's ribbed i can't tell if this is gonna focus okay there we go okay so yes i'm really enjoying it so far it has been i cast it on because i wanted kind of like a more mindless knit because i have a design on my needles and a sample yeah on my needles and so i wanted something that was like uh yeah this is this is mindless right now because it's bottom up so it starts with just you know straight up it's just the the ribbing um i'm making size one which is a little less than the intended ease but the intended ease is like maybe 12 inches and so um that's a lot of ease i don't usually have quite that much ease and so i think i'm gonna go for like a 10 inch of ease so anyway i'm really happy with it so far i put it on my instagram because the color is just so gorgeous it's looking a little darker here maybe the lighting um oh, i forgot to turn on my light again sorry bad lighting now um i also have the window open i don't know what i'm doing with the lighting but Anyway, um, oh yeah, people really like this purple. I love this purple. It's perfect to me. Um, I know I've seen a lot of like indie dyers coming out with colors very similar to this, and I love it. We need more of this in the world. Okay, so I cast that on. I have no plans to finish it quickly or anything like that. I just want something I can work on that doesn't like engage my, my brain that much. Um, I'm sure it will when I get to like the, the front panels and like the increasing and decreasing. But for now, while I'm just working on the body, I have about mm, maybe like five inches left before I start. Yeah, it's gonna be long. Um, I was highly influenced by the test knitter versions of this. So if you're a test knitter, don't take it for granted. Like when you post or, or share it to your story and you think maybe no one's gonna see this, but I definitely felt like I was super influenced by the test knitter versions. Um, yeah, Stitched by Shreya, she has a YouTube channel. She made one, I think Serena made one. I've talked about this before, but I just love seeing theirs and that's what really got me influenced to, to make it. Okay, oh, I yeah, I'm working on, I mentioned my sample knit. If you're following, I'm making the, the animals from Moosh and Friends, just three, but I'm currently working on the sheep right now, the sweet little sheep. She has one leg. Um, this one leg, it took me two hours last night to do it. So that's how, um, long it's been taking me to make these little guys. Um, and that's okay. But since it is a sample, like I do have, a, you know, a obligation to finish it more quickly. So I'm kind of trying to focus on these and get these done. Um, I have one more after her. I had to make her clothes and then one more after her. So, um, I'm about almost halfway done but like look at her little foot the attention to detail in this can you see that it's like it's her hoof is shaped and then like she has a little bottom so she can sit um or she can stand on her little hoof so oh yeah i gotta do the ears and the eyes but anyway so it's going well i'm liking it i'm learning a lot about just like small circumference knitting it uses a lot of techniques that i think are really nice to kind of build those skills up, lots of short rows, lots of shaping, lots of, you know, increasing, decreasing, lots of reading the pattern. So it's been good. Um, just a lot of like intense focus on, on what I'm doing. That's why I need that, um, sort of plain 
stockinette or not stockinette the plain like ribbing band that I'm working on right now for my cardigan because my brain <laughs> is on overload okay the last um finished no work in progress that I have I think I showed you this I definitely showed it last week in my um design spotlight yes design spotlight for a new pattern that I launched so this is um a sample I'm working on for the fall and it's a design that I that I'm working on I'm writing it up and I'm hoping to have it for testing like maybe next next week no maybe in two weeks so anyway this is it it's unnamed thus far but what I want for this sweater and how I'm planning to market it I'm just gonna give you a sneak peek because I'm not really good at like <laughs> keeping these things to myself but um, I want it to be like a sort of scrappy project. So what I did is I held together two strands of this good wool that was already in my, my yarn closet and, um, really just focus on like using the yarn that you, you kind of already have. Um, one, because I am not buying new yarn this year. Like I can buy yarn for samples. That's not a big deal, but I wanted to challenge myself to like find yarns in my yarn pantry yarn closet that I already had to make things for my design so that is this <laughs> um I did buy the green and I think that Pearl Soho maybe sent me the white for my blanket and it was left over um so I'm holding it double and so it's a nice weight where if you wanted to hold like you know DK and mohair if you want to hold like maybe three fingering weight any, any of that or marl it, oh, that would be really pretty. So I, yeah, and there's stripes. Obviously you could do lots of different color stripes. You could do whatever, whatever you wanted, whatever yarn you have. That's kind of my thinking um, and my goal, my goal for the sweater. Cause I see a lot of those for adults, like um, sea glass sweaters one I see. Um, I know like Petite Knit has like a super chunky sweater where you just hold together like five strands of yarn and just make this like gorgeous massive blend of all these different yarns so i kind of wanted to do that for a kids pattern um there might be some out there i just wanted to make one for myself because i think that's kind of goes along with what my intentions for all of my designs are is that you know they work for you they work for your family what you have going on in your life and um i think having a sort of scrappy intentionally designed scrappy sweater fits in with that intention for for my designs so it doesn't really look that scrappy and so that's why I I do need some help um deciding I'm gonna make a second sample that's my accountability but I always struggle to make a second sample because I don't know what yarn to use sometimes I'll have yarn support and so I need to use the same yarn sometimes I don't and so I can use whatever yarn and then there's a lot of yarn to choose from and I'm like I don't know so I do have a lot of Goodwill in my stash, some that I've bought and some you'll recognize from my um, blanket that was just left over from my prism blanket that they sent me yarn for. And so I have like these pinks. This is linen quill, so not that. But I have like these pinks and more pink and brown and gray, lots of pink and brown and gray. Um, so I'm thinking about making a pink one, um, just probably like the the baby size so that it's quick <laughs> um but the, i'm wondering if i should use a different yarn so that i can have a different like like here are two other yarns i held together or three other yarns i held together i would have to go into my yarn pantry and really look to make sure i could get the same weight honestly from a design perspective it would be way easier for me to just use goodwill again because i already swatched and it's the same yarn and but I'm wondering if it would be better for like the buyers, would it be better to see it in a different yarn or would I just rely on the test knitters for that? Because I do love sharing test knitter pictures and, you know, yarns and what they use and stuff. So I'm trying to decide what would be best. I don't really know. Um, obviously this won't be out for a while because that's a heavyweight sweater, but I'm thinking fall. So I've got to get it to my tech editor and then I've got to re you know, make all the corrections and then start the test knitting. And so maybe I'll hold off on the test knitting until like mid July 
and then August, September, maybe end of September release or October. Um, anyway, <laughs> all that to say, I just couldn't decide if I should use a new yarn or same yarn. I'm leaning towards the same yarn because like I, I like it. I, I think it'd be cute to see like a green and white one and then see a pink and white or a pink and green or something like that. But again, I'm, I'm just not sure. So anyway, I don't have any acquisitions today. Um, do I? No. I'm trying to think. I do, I do not. <laughs> Those are my projects. What I'm working on, please let me know. Oh, wait. There's one right here. Okay, this is my last work in progress. Okay, you guys have been following my The First Cardigan journey. I think I cast it on in... I took it to Disney. That was in February. So, yeah, I probably cast it on in January or February. Um, and I've just been kind of relaxed making it. Um, not, I'm not worried about, like, when I'm going to finish it, that kind of thing. I had to order some more yarn because I was using, you know, yarn that I already had. And I needed a little bit more. Anyway... I am so close to finishing it. I This is the second sleeve, so it's almost done, and I ran out of mohair. I did not anticipate running out of mohair because I purchased like the correct amount for this weight of sweater, but I think what got me was using the mohair in the button band um, because that really ate up a lot of yarn, so I think that's what happened. I honestly am not convinced I don't have more because when I bought this, I think I bought it maybe eight to nine months ago uh, during a sale, I bought so many because I was like, I am not running out of yarn. I always run out of yarn. I'm not doing that to myself. So I'm not convinced that there's not some in my yarn closet. My yarn closet does not have a light, so I have to use a flashlight. And yeah, I, anyway, that's where I'm at. I'm so disappointed. I can't decide if I should just take some out of the other sleeve, block it, and see how much length I'll actually need and then use that to like complete the sleeves. If I'll be happy with like a little bit maybe of a shorter sleeve or if I just need to buy one more ball and finish it. Unfortunately, I looked on the website where I first purchased the yarn and they're out of stock in that color. So if you happen to have a Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair in the colorway hazel <laughs> that comes from a pet, pet free home, um, yeah, send me a message. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I probably just need to buy another one, but, and it's not going to be that much. But then if I just buy the one, then I'll have to pay shipping. And I'm like, maybe I should wait, see if there's any other yarn I want, then I won't have to pay shipping. The dilemma I have. Anyway, maybe I'll have an acquisition in a couple of weeks and it will be some more yarn <laughs> for this sweater. Anyway, I hope you have a lovely weekend and happy knitting and I will see you next week.